Hey everyone. Hope you all are doing well and are excited for the new DLC that was just announced. Today, I am starting a new series on the channel that will focus on hard swapping in Elden Ring from the perspective of a mouse and keyboard player. In Elden Ring, you can hard swap three categories of items, weapons, talismans, and armor. Having a well thought out inventory gives you the tools to deal with difficult situations and invasions. In this series, I will explain the rationale behind the layouts, discuss the pros and cons that I experienced and demonstrate some of the swaps during invasions. To kick things off, this first video will focus on the weapon inventory, while the next two videos will cover talisman and armor inventories. I must emphasize though as a disclaimer, hard swapping is like the icing on a cake. It does not matter how well you can swap, if you don't have a good grasp of the fundamentals like spacing, attack, priority, and role discipline. For more information on these concepts, please check out Rust Bucket. His videos are top tier. Please subscribe to his YouTube channel, which I have linked below. Finally, I would also like to give a shout out to Donut. He is a very skilled mouse and keyboard player and I picked up a lot of tips from watching him. Make sure to follow his Twitch channel, which I have also linked below. The remainder of the video will be split into two parts the general concept behind my inventory, and the explanation of specific swaps to achieve a goal. If you enjoy my content, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Now, without further ado, let's get started. The concept. There are two types of input options for Elden Ring, controller and mouse and keyboard. Controller inventories focus on setting up layouts based on the least amount of button clicks. It allows those players to build up muscle memory to perform incredibly fast swaps. G9 has informative videos on this topic and I included links to those down below. However, I play on KBM, so the layout concepts are different and more complicated from that of controller players. In my weapon layout, I prioritize the locations of items based on their distance from the middle of the screen. The closer the weapon is to the right, the quicker I can move my mouse and click on it. The weapon inventories of KBM and controller players share a similarity in the way the player accesses it. <laughs> Talisman and armor layouts, on the other hand, follow a slightly different set of rules. You can get to your weapon layout on KBM by pressing the following series of keystrokes. This opens the first right-hand weapon slot, as shown on the screen. From here, you can move your mouse to click on the desired weapon. The page you see is somewhat derived from G9's weapon inventory. Essentially, you retain your main weapon in the offhand, while having access to all the necessary swaps available to your main hand. A downside to this form of weapon inventory management is that you have to pump in a lot of extra points into endurance to account for the weight of the swapped weapon, plus your main weapon. Specific swaps. What you see now is the current version of my inventory. For better visualization, I box certain areas of interest in different colors and labels to provide a clearer understanding of the layout. My main right-hand weapons and shields are located at the top left of the page. It contains two to three copies of weapons I would power stance such as the Kibos and Lances. And they all have similar Ashes of War and similar relative placements so I can efficiently swap to a desired Ash, without spending time to look at its description. The selection of weapons here can vary from build to build and person to person but this is what I like using on a dex build. Ashes of War such as Endure, Bloodhound Step, and Sword Dance are good candidates for these weapons because of their versatility and invasions. Either they provide a form of hyper armor to the smaller weapon classes or give you an escape method to get out of blenders and such. My primary swaps are located on the two right-hand columns of the page. These consist of the tools for chase downs, parries, turn and burns, ranged punishes, and quick damage dealers. My chase down tools are the Commander Standard and the Godskin Stitcher with Stormblade. The Commander Standard is the longest halberd in the game, and its running R1 is useful for even roll catching light rollers, assuming a decent latency. For a long distance chase down, I turn to the heavy thrusting sword because its running R2 has incredible forward momentum. Also, Stormblade is a useful ranged dash of war to punish flasks and boluses. Hyper Armor has been king since patch 1.10. Therefore, the newest addition to my inventory page was the Zweihander at the top with Stormstop. 
As you can see, all my Power Stance weapon setups consist of light weapons that don't have innate hyper armor. So having a quick swap to a weapon that has hyper armor on both its one hand and two hand boost sets is useful for dealing with opponents who constantly mash out of hit stun. Next to it I have my parry tools. A shield with either carry and retaliation or golden parry, and a lightning misericord with endure. Parrying is a whole separate topic and extremely situational in an invasion setting. However, as a proof of concept, I will show how the swap works versus APVE mob. For area of effect damage options, I have the Hand of Millennia, a Twin Blade with Spinning Slash, and the Stormhawk Axe. Each of these is useful for different situations. With the right setup, the Hand of Millennia can one-shot enemies with its Ash of War. It's best used in tight spaces where the opponent can't roll out of it. And once the first part lands, the rest of the Ash combos into itself. The Twin Blade weapon class is unique because it gets hyper armor during spinning slash, making it both a good burst damage tool as well as a solid wake up option after landing a repost or backstab. Finally, the most used of the three is the Stormhawk Axe. Its Ash of War is incredibly powerful and comes out fast. It's the perfect turn and burn tool to chump the opponent's health. I have the ranged options below my main block of weapons. The Jar Cannon and the two Great Bows are great openers to a fight because you can get some easy damage off on unsuspecting enemies. Out of all the tools available for an invader, arguably the Great Bow with the Golem Arrows is the best invasion weapon in the game. On the sixth row, I have a few niche weapons that are useful when facing a parry spammer or a shield poking turtle. Neither the Flail nor Whip can get parried, which is useful while the Starfist and the Raptor Claws are good for draining the endurance of turtles and breaking their shield block. These two also carry Endure which can get you out of tight situations like being stunlocked versus a Dragon Breath Spammer. That concludes the first page of the right-hand weapon inventory setup. The bulk of the pages below consist of left-hand weapon options to pair either with the Power Stance weapons above or the main hand shields. For Power Stance setups, one of the strongest dashes of war to put on your left hand, regardless of the build, is Braggart's Roar. It is an easy body buff to apply and give a significant boost to your AR, endurance, and defense. Last, but not least, here are some miscellaneous weapons that I have at the bottom of my inventory. They are usually reserved for either last resort situations like the Chainsaw and Sleep Swords, or for random off-meta setups like the Hand Axe or Black Bow. Before we wrap things up, I would like to emphasize two points. One, the most important part of any inventory layout is how comfortable you are with it. Through your own experience, figure out which swaps are most useful for your style. Two, the only way to gain that level of comfort is to practice. Practice swapping versus the PVE first, and then consciously make an effort to swap during invasions. Speed can only come with time and practice. Thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something today that you can apply to your own gameplay. Be sure to stay tuned for a second video that will cover talisman and armor swaps. Till next time, happy hunting my fellow bad red men.